So when we're determining sample size, here's how we look at it. Suppose we want to collect sample data in order to estimate some population proportion. The question is, how many sample items must be obtained? In other words, what's the sample size that we have to have? So if we take our margin of error formula, which looked like this, and solve it for n, the sample size, here's what we get. We have to square our critical value and then take our p hat times 1 minus our p hat and divide by our margin of error squared. Now the problem with this is that we don't have p hat unless we've already collected the sample data. We can't collect the sample data until we know what sample size to use. So in order to be able to use this formula, we need some kind of estimate for our sample proportion. So what we end up with is two different formulas for our sample size, depending on what situation we have. So our minimum sample size necessary to construct a confidence interval for P with a margin of error E is this one. We take our critical value and square it times P star times 1 minus P star divided by E squared. And this is where P star is a prior estimate for our sample proportion. In other words, if there was a prior study done, if we have some kind of way of estimating what our sample proportion might turn out to be, then we would use it in here. Now, if we have no idea or if a prior estimate isn't available, then we assume the most conservative case, which gives us the largest sample size, and that would be when P star is equal to 0.5. In other words, if we have no way whatsoever of estimating our sample proportion, then we go with the most conservative estimate, which is that our sample proportion is just one half or 0.5. In this case, the formula is a little simpler. We take our critical value and square it times 0.25 and divide by E squared. One thing to remember when using either one of these formulas is that since we're talking about proportions, everything has to be in decimals. So that includes the margin of error E. If you're given the margin of error as a number of percentage points, you have to put it in this formula in decimal form. Here's an example. A manager for eBay wants to determine the current percentage of U.S. adults who now use the Internet. How many adults must be surveyed in order to be 95% confident that the sample percentage is in error by no more than three percentage points? For part A of this question, we'll use the fact that a previous survey in 2012 found that 83% of adults use the internet. For part B, we'll assume that there's no prior estimate for the sample proportion. So for part A, we already found a critical value for 95% confidence interval is 1.96. In this one, we're using our prior estimate of 83% or 0.83. And our margin of error that we want is 0.03. That comes from up here where we said we wanted the sample to percentage to be in error by no more than three percentage points. Three percentage points is saying 3% for our margin of error. So again, we have to convert that to a decimal form. In this case, since we have a prior estimate, we're using the first formula. So we have 1.96 squared times 0.83 times 1 minus 0.83 divided by 0.03 squared. And that gives us 602.3. Now, since we're looking for our minimum sample size necessary in these problems, we always have to round up to the next whole number. So we would round up from 602.3 up to 603. That's the minimum sample size necessary using this prior estimate for p hat. Now in part b, if we assume we don't have a prior estimate, we're going to use the other formula. So we would have our 1.96 squared times 0.25 divided by 0.03 squared. This one gives us 1067.1, which we would round up to 1068. Notice how much bigger this minimum sample size is than the one we got from using the prior estimate. 
That's what I meant about this being the most conservative way to do these problems. It gives us the biggest sample size.